This lecture, I'm going to talk about narrators in prose fiction, the people who tell us the stories that we read. So what is a narrator? Well, it's basically the person or voice that's telling the story. Again, the storyteller. And all narrative prose, novels, short stories, they all have narrators. It's essential to their work. Um, and the narrator is very similar to the speaker in a poem. The speaker is the one that tells you what's going on, speaks their voice, uh, speaks their story in the poem. The narrator is the similar voice in a, a novel or short story. Uh, now, while narrators are in all narrative prose and even in some, some poems, and they're very similar to the speakers in poems, there's almost never a narrator in drama. Sometimes there will be, but it's very rare in plays that will have a narrator because we have the characters acting for themselves right in front of us. When talking about narrators, there's a few features that we pay attention to. Um, and to break those down to their most simple, or to give a basic overview, those features are internal versus external narrators, the person of the narrator, whether it's first, second, or third, the level of knowledge of the narrator, is it omniscient, limited, objective? We'll talk about these terms in a moment. And the level of trustworthiness or presence of the narrator. So we'll talk about all these over the next few slides, what these features mean. First, internal versus external. Internal narrators are narrators who are a part of the story that they're talking about. They're a character involved in the events. And so this limits the reader to what the narrator knows and experiences. Because they're an individual person taking part in the events, we only know what's going on from their perspective. An external narrator is a narrator that's not part of the story. And they may or may not be objective or transparent. That is, not really make themselves known as a storyteller. Might just be an, a body, disembodied voice speaking the story to us. Um, on the other hand, the external narrator, even though they're not a part of the story, they might express or even suggest opinions on the characters or events, attitudes about what's going on. So this is the basic of internal versus external. Part of the story, not part of the story. Now let's look at person, which is very closely related to internal and external, and in many ways is a more refined uh, way of t talking about internal versus external narratives. Um, there's three different persons. Of course, you should know this from uh, your basic knowledge of grammar. First person is I or we. Second person is you when you're saying talking to you. And third person is when you're talking about someone else, he, she, it, or they. So those are the three persons that a narrator can speak in. First person narrator is almost always internal. It's a character within the story describing what they are doing, what's happening to them, what they're feeling and seeing and so forth. So the narrator is part of the story and they know the plot from their individual first person perspective. The third person narrator is almost always external, someone outside of the story. And they're describing what other people are acting. And a third person narrator, again, outside the story, and they have a roving perspective from character to character, scene to scene, situation to situation. The second person narrator is very rare. This is not something we see in a lot of novels or stories, although it does happen occasionally. And again, it's all, almost always going to be internal, um, but what makes it strange is the narrator is speaking directly to you as though, quote unquote, you are a part of the story or a character in it. So it sort of pre pretends that the reader is one of the characters in the story as well. And again, second person is really rare. It's usually going to be first or third person. This then leads us to the level of knowledge that the narrator has. Um, first person narrators obviously are going to be very limited because they only know what they know. Third person narrators, however, can be distinguished by the level of knowledge that they have. Is the third person omniscient? Do they know everything? Is it a godlike figure that's telling us the story? And omniscient narrators, they can describe the inner feelings and thoughts of multiple characters. Not just what they say, not just what they look like, but he was thinking blah, blah, blah. He felt blah, blah, blah. So the omniscient narrator knows everything. 
The limited narrator is the narrator that is, again, outside of the narrative, but focuses on one character. It describes the inner feelings and thoughts of usually only one of the major characters, so it knows everything about that one person. Um, and it usually does not, the third person limited narrator, does not know, or at least does not tell us, what's going on in the minds of other characters. And this, I don't have any statistics to back this up, but in, I get the sense that limited is the most common type of narrator in most stories. Um, that use third-person narrators, that is. And then finally, we have objective narrators. This is a third-person narrator who's not part of the story, does not go into the inner thoughts or feelings of the characters, only tells us what's going on, what we could see ourselves. So this is almost like a camera's eye, a camera lens, watching us, we see all, or watching the scene, we see all the characters, what they do, what they look like, etc. But we don't hear their inner thoughts or feelings. We have to judge that based on their external appearances. And again, I don't have any statistics to back this up, but my sense is this is the least common style of narrator um, in third person narratives, at least. And some of those other qualities. So a narrator can be intrusive. A third person narrator can be intrusive. Uh, that is someone who is outside of the story, um, but occasionally makes a direct address to the reader. They might express opinions or attitudes about the characters or events, or they may even question the reader or invite the reader to certain considerations or conclusions. So a reader, uh, a narrator might be describing something and then say, can you believe this? Or clearly this person was, was doing the wrong thing. Um, they might make some sort of moral judgment or say, how would you feel about this such and such thing, right? So that's an intrusive narrator, a third person narrator, or even a first person narrator that makes a direct address to the reader. There's also unreliable narrators. And these are ones that are untrustworthy, usually first person. And something about the way they tell the story makes us doubt exactly that they're giving us the full truth. So this might be a narrator who has a personal bias. Um, they're a flawed person. They have, or they're untrustworthy or unsavory for some reason. They have some sort of interest in the events that they're narrating. Um, or they may intentionally or even unintentionally deceive the reader about events or motivations or make contradictions about things that they've said earlier. So unreliable narrators. In some sense, all first-person narrators are unreliable because they only can give us their knowledge, but some are more obviously unreliable than others. So for example, um, a racist narrator, and there are stories with racist narrators, he's or she would be unreliable in some sense because of their racial bias. And part of the point of reading the story is to both identify with them from their perspective but also to challenge it. So these are some other qualities associated with narrators. Now let's review. Questions to ask yourself when thinking about narrators. Who is telling the story? And does this person have a particular attitude towards the events that they're talking about? Do they have an interest or involvement in the events? Are they actually a part of the story? How much do they know? about what's going on. What are the limitations on the narrator's knowledge and how might these limitations be important? What might that suggest to us about things we need to watch out for? Questions we might ask, doubts or skeptical moments that we might, skepticism that we might hold towards the narrator. Is the narrator a part of the story? Are they inside it or outside it? And how does that affect what they say? If they're a part of the story, how do the events then affect them in such a way that they narrate them from their particular perspective. Uh, what is the narrator's attitude towards the story, the characters, etc.? Are they explicit with their opinions or do they make suggestions or hints? That is, are they openly intrusive or only suggesting it? And is the narrator trustworthy? Do we believe what they say? Is there anything that we learn about them that might affect their honesty or trustworthiness? What in the story, from their perspective, seems doubtful? So these are all questions to ask about the narrator because they help us to ask that question, who's talking, what are they saying, and why is it important for them to say this? What do I understand about them? How does knowing who this person is and, their, and the way they speak, their way they think, 
how does that help me to understand better what they're communicating?